yeah, so Acuna, um, I guess I could try to introduce it again, but you might as well do it. And you can also yeah, tell happy us to. Like, how it all came yeah. about. Acuna is a fun story. So again, I want to thank you for having me. It's exciting to be on, on the podcast. Um, the story of Acuna actually began over a break period, uh, sort of after another project, Alpaca. So maybe I should go way back to the beginning of this year <laughs> um, with the release of Llama. Um, the Llama model developed by Meta is a core foundation model. It embodies a lot of knowledge, but it doesn't really speak, it doesn't chat. Uh, and so some colleagues actually uh, led by my former advisor, Carlos Gestern, when I was a grad student now at Stanford, um, led a project called Alpaca. And the idea was to use a self-instruct, a, a method to train the Llama model to behave more like a chatbot um, using something like ChatGPT as a guidance mechanism. Uh, and so they built this data set, which is pretty clever actually. And they uh, created a nice fine tuning script that they released uh, to the world um, that allows someone to take that data set they built uh, and fine tune uh, Llama to speak more like a person, to have a conversation, to follow instructions. Uh, my students at Berkeley were like, we could do better. Uh, and one of the things that's important to know in this entire kind of revolution of large language models is that data is critical to success. Um, and so the students looking at this project said, there's a better data set. Uh, there's this website called ShareGPT, uh, which is quite, sort of actually a demo of some web technologies, but uh, that, that website um, did something pretty neat. Uh, it allowed people to have fun conversations on chat GPT. Uh, and then share those with their friends. These are the conversations they thought were funny, insightful, amazing, hilarious, I don't know. Uh, but important, uh, these are the conversations they wanted to share. Um, and so these are high quality conversations. Um, we downloaded, uh, I think, 800 megabytes of data using the public APIs for the ShareGPT uh, website. Uh, and then the students took that data, the Alpaca training scripts, and they basically put the two together. Uh, there's a little bit of work the students did. This will blow your mind. They removed the HTML tags from the data. Um, they uh, did a little bit of additional cleaning. Uh, and they fed that data into, again, the Alpaca training scripts and fine-tuned the model. And out came the Cunha. And this was done, I think, over break. I mean, this is spring break. Uh, yeah, early, no, maybe it was early, yeah, early spring break. This was done you know, on, on vacation. It's kind of a, a hack uh, over a few days. Uh, and they got a model that they were excited about. And then... We need to figure out if it's any good. Uh, so the Stanford team invested and actually had some benchmarks run against. Um, we wanted to use you know, standard benchmarks like MMLU. Uh, there's a lot of benchmark in the NLP community for evaluating these models. Unfortunately, none of them are very good. Uh, uh, they're not good because they don't measure kind of chat behavior, complex creative uh, settings are more oriented to retrieval, answering simple facts. Um, so to really assess a chatbot, we needed something stronger. Uh, and so students had this clever idea. Why don't we just ask GPT? Uh, so they created a set of basic questions. They asked the model to answer those questions. We also asked Alpaca to answer those questions and GPT-3.5. Uh, and then we asked GPT-4, whose answer is better? And score them, and then score them on various metrics. Uh, and in the process of doing that, we found out that our model was actually better than Alpaca, go Berkeley, uh, and actually pretty close to GPT-3.5, uh, which is really pretty exciting. Um, and so we posted this online and there was a lot of interest in this model. You know, in a, a few weeks period, we went from Llama to uh, Alpaca uh, to Vicuña, um, each making big strides in performance uh, as assessed by the benchmark that we had created. Uh, so Alpaca was certainly better than Llama and, and Vicuña was better than Alpaca. Um, and so, yeah, this generated a ton of interest. Uh, there's a, a blog going around about a discussion inside of Google. Um, some people in Google were also pretty concerned about this. Because uh, right. we also compared against Palm, or I guess Bard at that point, yeah. uh, and it was comparable uh, to Bard. Um, and in fact, it was a little better than Bard in some of the other benchmarks we started running. Um, so it was a big step forward for these, you know, open source research models, and yeah. something we were pretty excited about. That was the uh, "We Have No Moat" memo that went around Google, right? Yeah, so the we have no moat uh, story, and I, I will say in, in defense of Google, they do have a moat, uh, as <laughs> as illustrated by Vicuña. It is about the data uh, and. Using your data, using it intelligently, uh, can make all the difference. Uh, so building a big model is important. Uh, we took off the shelf big models. We didn't pre-train our model, uh, and we did fine tuning again. It's fairly cheap, um, but we did it on really good data. Uh, and so I think maybe the the punchline that if you were to take one thing away from from this conversation, you know, in the beginning at least, uh, is that data matters. Uh, and we saw that with ShareGPT uh, and Vicuña. 